fun, let's go outside, let's take a walk in the sun. There are things to learn and things to see, a big wide world for you, your dog, and me. Dog Talk. Hi everybody and welcome to Dog Talk. Look what I have here. This is a Drakauer. If you're not familiar with this dog, it is a hunting dog, but it does so much more. Susan Jones, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Pat? I just couldn't believe it when someone said, Susan has a dog, happened to see the dog doing agility, and I said, really, what breed? And they said, a Drakauer. I said, oh my gosh, because <laughs> these dogs work so well in hunting. They can point, they can retrieve. They're strong. They're you very see strong. This, dog. this is a strong dog. So you know something about the, uh, about the heritage of these dogs? Yes, uh, they were bred to be the all-around hunting dog. Yes. Uh, they were bred from four German breeds, uh, one of which was the Griffon. Uh-huh, the Griffon. Uh -huh. And um, she's a water dog. She, she hunts pheasants and quail. Uh-huh. In Europe, um, they're very popular in Europe. And there they hunt um, game. Mm -hmm. They track blood trails. They're just, uh, I, they uh, hunt boar. Exactly. And exactly. Uh, they're just the all-around dog. I am hunters. so pleased that you do know the heritage of your breed because it's so important when people select a dog to know that for which it was bred is what you are going to get in personality and abilities. So I will tell you that these dogs have gained a lot of... Uh, um, accolades through field trials now, which is remarkable. Most pointers, you know, are the pointers that we as Americans are used to. Yes. The Drakauer is a little different. It's a little, uh, it has the, the little uh, kind of a Griffon face mm -hmm. with the fuzziness on it. But these dogs, when they were bred, were bred from dogs who were strong. Deer hunting dogs, as a matter of fact, it goes back that far. And these dogs can run and run and run. They do not run out of energy, That's so which true. what <laughs> makes them great for agility. agility. <laughs> so how is she doing, Uta? Oh, she's doing so well. She, it, it's just her personality. Uh, she really gets it. Mm -hmm. Once you show her something and she gets it, it stays. Oh, they are so intelligent. And yes. I might add, they do make good family dogs. Oh, she seems so happy. She is. That's the thing I know. They've, they've about kind her. of got a lab personality in uh -huh. a lot of ways. Maybe even a little more energy than a lab, if you can She's imagine. She's got energy. You but can tell. this kind of dog, yeah, this kind of dog, too, you want to be sure that you do have enough activities for the dog because, yes. uh, because of her energy. Now, we have made her the dog of the week because she's so special. She's already already gotten into the uh, into the toys. There's another one for you. Oh. Yes, it is. And we have for you a $100 gift certificate oh, well, to A1 you. Pet Emporium. Thank you. Yes, listen to that. <laughs> She's going to enjoy that all yes. day. Yes, well, we are is. so looking forward to watching her with Nancy Haddock and doing her agility stuff. Please so, do stop by. She's just wonderful. Oh, she is a wonderful dog, a wonderful breed dog. I want to see her running. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you should see her. Folks, it's a great one to research. If you have a high energy family, this dog would be for you. So thank you so much, Susan. You're so we welcome. appreciate it. Anytime. So We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Here's a quick tip for helping your dogs maintain a normal body temperature throughout the summer season. Provide cool water pools for them to hop into. Plastic baby pools are great. Also, new plastic cement mixing tubs are very inexpensive and sturdy.
provide plenty of fresh water daily, keeping buckets and pools in a shaded area. If you have a covered patio, provide your dog with a comfortable blanket or bed. And remember folks, the heat you feel is twice as hard on your pet. Nicole Holloway is with us again today. You know, we had decided because there are so many laws, so many rules that people have to follow that we are not familiar with. So today we're going to continue our study with Nicole. Now you are with MND, which is? Maples, Nicks, and Dieselhorst. Which is a law firm. Right. And we're not holding that against you. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> uh, because we need vital information from you and your firm, and we are so grateful that they have let you come on and, and talk with us about this. So what are we talking about today? Well, uh, we mentioned when you introduced me last time that there are, are lots of different layers to all of the laws and rules that people have um, that may apply to them when they uh, own a dog or any kind of pet. So I figured we'll start at the bottom today and uh, talk about the, the local ordinances. Excellent, that, that excellent. And those apply. are the most important ones to us at this particular time. So, so right. tell us about those. Um, well, first, I would want to mention that there may be a level below that, depending on where you live, because I've noticed that a lot of homeowners associations actually have some of their own little particular rules. So if you are part of a homeowners association, you might want to check with them to see if there's something you need so to look at. So are those rules legal if you get crosswise with someone in the homeowners? Uh, division uh, can they sue you can you sue them it would depend on what the circumstances is if it's something that's covered by another law uh, rather than just the homeowners agreement um, it, it would probably go to the legal side of it but a lot of uh, associations I've noticed have you know you can only have a dog so big or you have to clean up this part over here or, or you know little particular rules uh -huh. for aesthetics mainly okay. less less confrontational than they are aesthetic purposes. okay um, local ordinances though are you know like you mentioned they're probably the most important for uh, people to understand because they're the most they affect them most directly I think um, they're most specific uh, rather than the state laws and the county laws which may be a little uh, less particular or a little more general in nature um, one website I would like to point people to is uh, www.municode2.com. It's M-U-N-I-C-O-D-E, the number two, dot com. And the reason that is such a good website is because it has a variety of local ordinances for different cities and uh, sub small rural areas that people might be living. So you can go look up your own laws. Uh -huh. Almost every town has their own set of ordinances. Now they're all very similar. Um, Oklahoma has, City has a set, Edmond has a set, Shawnee has a set, Guthrie. They all have their own little, mm -hmm. you know. So, so give me some of the, uh, that, that I would run into as a, a dog owner. One common one, like I said, they're all kind of similar, is that you have to maintain control of your animals off of your property at all times. Um, normally with dogs, that's considered to be you know, a leash of, of some sort. You can't let them front run free. If they are running free and something happens, you can be held liable for it or you can be cited for it under various local ordinances. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of a, you know, the, the most obvious exactly. one. Um, another one that's interesting is if you are off your property, you're generally required to have some type of implement to clean up after your dog. Um, you and this is an, an ordinance? Correct. Okay. Um, I know for a fact that Edmond has such an ordinance and Oklahoma City has that ordinance as well specifically or mm -hmm. some version of it. Um, they, don't, they don't say specifically what you have to have with you. So you have to pick up the poop. That's exactly right. <laughs> and I think good pet owners are going to do that anyway, but yes. people will not realize that it's actually a law that, that we need to do things yeah, like that. Yeah, and nobody that. likes to have a stranger walking down the street with his dog and poop in your yard. Exactly. You know, that happens. Or in town, something like that. Oosh, gross. Right. So can they cite you for it? What Absolutely. Do, what? You, can, you can get a citation from the city where you live or that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually it's a small monetary penalty, um, but you know, those are designed to, to keep the areas clean and yeah. keep the cities you know, clean. So, so what about uh, the liabilities as far as um, if your dog is running free and the dog 
runs into someone's yard and bites them or bites a, a, one of the dogs. Almost all of the uh, ordinances, the cities have ordinances related to, um, it, it goes back to the control of your dog, where if your dog does get away from you or is running free for some reason and goes on to someone else's property um, and they're trespassing effectively and they harm someone, you are going to be liable for that. You can be cited for that under a city ordinance or there could be uh, more general state laws that could apply. Wow. Um, so again, you know, there's monetary penalties for that, but those can border on criminal penalties depending on how, you know, extreme the circumstances So you're is. talking about going from a misdemeanor to a felony? Not necessarily a felony, uh, but, you know, allowing what they would consider to be a dangerous implement or a dangerous object, again, back to the animals as property kind okay. of issue. Um, you could be, you know, endangering somebody unnecessarily. Uh, so, you know, keep control of your dog at all times, I think, is, is something we all as pet parents want to make sure we're, mm -hmm. we're doing anyway. Um, but again, the, but there are actually, uh, generally speaking, the ordinances uh, follow a pattern. And as long as the dog is on your property and is unprovoked, if that dog bites or, or is, I'm sorry, it, it is not so if someone comes onto your property and provokes your dog into biting them, uh -huh. you're not going to be liable oh. because they've... How do you prove something like that? That's the age-old question, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> I always, he made me do it. it exactly right. I, well, I mean, if they come on your property and they strike out at the dog, or they throw something at the dog or something of that sort, and the dog responds, I would imagine that would be would be the normal thing, sure. Right. So, well, we appreciate so much your coming on, Nicole. I'm looking really forward to the next issue that we can discuss. Sure. Thanks again. And if somebody wants to connect with you or ask you a question, how do they do that? Uh, the best way would probably be to email me. Okay. And uh, my email address is Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E, at mndlawfirm.com. Okay. Or feel free to call the office at 405-478-3737 and uh, just ask for me and I'll be happy to talk to you and help Excellent. in any way I can. Excellent. Well, we appreciate it. Thanks so much, hon. Thank We're you, going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Hey, Dog Talk fans, make sure you join the conversation on social media. Just go to facebook.com slash dogtalktv. We'd love to hear a story of your furry friend, so send us an email to pat at dogtalktv.com. You could be featured as our Dog of the Week. Now, enjoy the show. We are here today to celebrate the life of a very good friend who has passed. Yes. Kevin Puckett, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Matt Goodwin, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Kevin, you are on the board of Free to Live. Yes. And are you the president this year? I am the president. Yes, that's just what I had heard. And you brought a friend who is the ambassador today for Free to Live, and her name is... It's copper. Copper, because she is that color. Exactly. And Copper is a little lady who has been so nice here today, <laughs> and she's going to keep an eye on all of the cameramen. So... Uh, as I say, we are here to pay tribute to Bill Larson. God bless him. Bill, uh, you know, has been an icon for all of the rescues in our state, all of the shelters. Everyone would come to him and ask him questions because he started Free to Live so long ago and has kept it going. How long has Free to Live been going? It will be 32 years in 32 August. 32 years. It's just incredible incredible and the, the wonderful service that you have provided to all of these dogs because it is a no-kill shelter. Absolutely correct. Absolutely. And uh, the cats and dogs and whatever, you know, go in there and they have lives forever. Sure. Uh, and we appreciate it. Matt, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank I understand you, you are you. doing very well. I am so proud of everything that you have done, you know, and, and you are actually the hands-on guy. Sure. Well, we have, a, we have a great team and volunteers that work really hard and staff, so it's just awesome. And like I said, the longevity that uh, Bill and the, and the team from the beginning and the network they created has been, it's just a need to be a part of it. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, uh, we looked through our files and found an interview that I had done with Bill. And we offer this to you guys as a tribute. Let's watch. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, Bill Larson, you are the patriarch of this establishment. How long have you had this place? Well, my wife and I, at the time, who's deceased now, uh, actually we opened up for business on August the 3rd, 1984. So that's 28 years. 28 years ago. Yes. So was this your land? No. Uh, we, uh, well, uh, we decided, uh, well, I'm going to give you a little background. I sold my company, uh -huh. and so I had a little extra money, and wanted to do, we wanted to do something for the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, Oklahoma City and surrounding places were doing lots for people but very little for animals. So you were into animals? Yes, and we... Uh, dogs were we, or? were we ever into animals? <laughs> we had 12 dogs and 12 cats at home. Wow, you must have had a big house. <laughs> uh, no, all the dogs decided they ought to sleep on the bed. I see. And one of them was part St. Bernard, so... <clears throat> that's that made it difficult. So uh, really, you needed a place for all your dogs and cats. <laughs> yeah, right. But that was part of it. But uh, we just wanted to, to open an animal sanctuary. So we went to California where there was one similar to this, not, not as large, but run by Emily Jo Beard, who the Beard Oil Company here. And we went out there and saw that and came up with this concept, which is entirely different from any other sanctuary that I know of. We don't cage animals, we don't euthanize animals. We, the animals all, each as you saw, each animal has a run inside, it can be inside, outside, either one of them. Yes, and you took us on that, that tour earlier, and uh, I was amazed. The, uh, the first, what, building that you put up, what, was it a kennel? The, <clears throat> we put up the kennel uh, simultaneously put up the kennel, a cat house for the cattery keeper, and a house for the kennel master, and an office, mm -hmm. and a cattery, and uh, uh, had a couple of little tin buildings yes. that for use for. So that order. that was back when you were just making forming plans about what you wanted. No, that's when we we did that. We started that in 1980. Three, and with volunteers and with paid help so and with you, volunteers. So how did you organize the, uh, because obviously uh, you were going to have a kennel master, obviously you were going to have someone with the, with the cats whom you had to hire. How did you get everybody else involved? I mean, that's a big task, getting volunteers well, and people interested. The volunteers came easy. The getting the right people to do, be kennel master and the cattery keeper that was difficult. Uh, we uh, actually, this thing got started uh, by Frances Bryan, who a friend of my wife, and she belonged to an organization called uh, hmm, Pet, Pet, not Pets and People, but, uh, uh, but pet, 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 pet Finders. Pet Finders, and, oh, yes. Uh, anyway, so she got interested in that, and it was a very small thing, and then we went from that to this and from this to this to this. Well, I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you and everything that you've done. Uh, Free to Live is probably one of the first organizations that really got started, one of the first rescue type organizations. And certainly in Oklahoma we were the first and the largest and we're still the largest and uh, the others are not like us. Most so, of them are cage animals yeah. and this, that, and the other. So, um, what it, what's the, uh, you have a resident animal? I mean, obviously, uh, in most of these rescues and shelters, they have an animal that kind of stays because people kind of get used to them and love them a lot and they just keep them. You have one like that? We've got 350 of them like that. <laughs> well, how about the, uh, let me put it this way, what is the oldest resident? I think, uh, What's that dog? Mocha. Mocha's the dog's name. Uh -huh. Been here 15 years. Wow. Well, I'm sure that Mocha is a wonderful dog, and we appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you for asking us to do this.
So that is our tribute to Bill Larson. Thank and you I so see much. that you have a, an excellent plaque here that you have made. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? It really is. Uh, the board really wanted to, wanted to work, and I worked, you know, obviously with him for a number of years. And he was really one of those people, like the most interesting man in the world. I mean, he had been an attorney, he had been a stunt pilot, um, he had done work for animals, but also a lot of work for uh, for children, abuse children, and volunteer work, won a national award. And um, you know, Kevin had worked closely with him on, on on some of those things. So yes, he did so much, and there is no doubt, no question about that. His life was full, and he gave back. You know, this is the thing: the joy that it takes. You know, with within you. You know, to be able to say, I have done all of these things, I want to give back. I want sure. to do something. And of course, animals were his thing. Yes. You all were, were lucky to have him, and the, he was lucky to have you. And, uh, you know, this, it's, it's a remarkable place for you to live. It really is. Well, we think so, and uh, <clears throat> we certainly appreciate it. Bill founding it and everybody who supported us and we would love to say thank you to you for all your support through the years and for that wonderful tribute that you just mm. did to Bill. Thank you. Well, it, it is our gift to you and uh, we hope that you will keep us advised now. We're, we're neighbors here, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so we'll be looking forward to seeing you and your next event. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Well, we have a puppy today. How exciting is that? Nancy Haddock is back. Nancy, how are you? I'm fabulous. Twister Agility, everything is going well. I understand that soon you're going to, to get your be a judge. You're moving out and expanding, doing mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. Yes. And a new puppy. I just couldn't stand it. Of course, you chose the kind of puppy that I knew you would. This is a little Border Collie Poopy Doo. Yes. yes. Isn't he sweet? <laughs> now, he is four and a half months, guys. Four and a half months, which is very puppyish. <laughs> and uh, full of energy, just loves to go and loves to do. Is he going to be a good agility dog? He's going to be a fabulous agility dog. Wow. Well, I would not have expected anything less having an expert oh, trainer like you. Holds and he says, I'm ready to go right now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll let Ted take uh, hold of his collar, too. And, yeah. Okay. And there he will go. go. He'll get interested in Ted. I'll Ted. give him a belly rub, and everything will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me what's going on in the agility field. Everything is, is it modernizing? Is it getting to be different? Oh, agility is just expanding and changing. Um, you know, the courses are more technical, which means you really have to put a lot more training into the dog. <laughs> And, um, you know, it's growing. It's the fastest growing sport in the world. Yes, I understand that. You know, when I did my research, too, to kind of update myself, it is uh, actually uh, the people in a, a certain breeds, too, especially, mm -hmm. at least 40% of the breeds of people of these kinds of dogs do agility with their dogs. That's mm -hmm. remarkable. 40% yeah. of the people who have this breed of dog. Yeah. So, you know, they're getting out there. They're doing it. And, of course, we know that uh, oh, that he can, <laughs> that um, oh. <laughs> that any breed of dog can do agility. Any breed of dog can do agility, and it's a fabulous exercise for them. Um, you know, there are certain breeds that excel uh -huh. at it. The fast dogs, the dogs that pay attention. Uh -huh. Which border collies? Border collies were bred to specifically be highly intelligent, very athletic, very focused, and take orders well. And and of course, they have to have that basic prey drive. They do. They you know, have they to have, have the to have drive. that. But they have to be smart enough to know when to turn it off and turn it on. Mm -hmm. And that's where a trainer comes in. That is so. You know, I, I highly recommend, of course, every time that we speak together, folks, I recommend interacting with your dog. Dog sports are perfect, made for it, tell you made for this kind of thing. Yeah. So if you have a dog, doesn't matter what breed it is, there are so many sports out there, you know, to experience with you and your dog. It connects, it makes you closer to your dog, it's just fabulous. So, you know, we actually did a little uh, video of you with uh, this wonderful dog. <laughs> 
Would you like to see it? I'd love to I see it. I bet he X. would. X will enjoy it too. Lie down. Come here. Sit. Down. Come on, down. Good dog. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Ready, go. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. X, 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 go. Woohoo! Good boy, go. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. X, 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 X. Good puppy. Ready, go. Yay, puppy. Good boy. Good boy. Are you ready? Ready, tunnel. Go. 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 Yeah, get your toy. <laughs> you know, all the time that we're talking and we're watching this video, this dog is going, yes, I'll tunnel. Yes, I'll do this. This is a four and a half month old dog and look what he can do. He's been like this since I brought him home at 10 weeks. It's remarkable. Right. Folks, this is a, a great experience and a great opportunity for all of us here. You know, inter get an interaction with your dog mm. through something like this. Nancy had you're, you have a wonderful facility with Twister Agility. How do they get in touch with you? TwisterAgilityAndDogSports.com. Uh -huh. They can contact me there. Oh, fantastic. Well, we're all going to do that. We had a great show. Ted, you have fun today? Yeah, oh my God. A <laughs> lot of puppies involved. That's I'm, I'm right. going to go do this agility now. Yes, I think you definitely should. You should Could get Duke involved together? in it. That, oh, that yes. would be an excellent <laughs> thing to do. Oh, man. Folks, we have had a wonderful time. We hope that you have too. Remember to let us know what you want to see, what you want to, to who do you want to have on. You know, we can do this all day. Yes, we could play all day. <laughs> Day. We can. I'm not helping. I'm kind of exciting him right now. No, that's all right. That's okay. Uh, you take care, and we will see you next week. Thanks so much. Guys. about big dogs, uh-huh, talking about little dogs, oh yeah, chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging hole, thing like that, dogs, talking about dogs, laughing dogs, sad dogs, happy dogs, mad dogs, dogs, just talking about dogs, lost and alone, running the street, checking the garbage, looking to eat. Out there sad and on their own The law will get them if they got no home Dogs Talk about dogs Dogs We're talking about dogs You say they were angels sent from above Then a year or two later you fell out of love You dumped them man and kicked them out Now what the heck was that about? Dogs We're talking about dogs Dogs them poor little dogs talking about big dogs uh-huh talking about a little dog oh yeah chasing the ball chasing the cat digging the hole things like that dogs